uh, my task is uh, very simple uh, in terms of uh, introducing the keynote speaker. Uh, yeah, it's a pretension saying that it's simple because I shared with uh, Bruce or earlier when he mentioned the name of Pierre Sane, yeah. how intimidated I was to, to be the one introducing him. And uh, uh, being sure that a whole day will not be enough to list everything uh, uh, our August keynote speaker has done uh, and the contribution he keeps doing for the betterment of our uh, communities, of our continent, uh, of the world at large. Uh, but just a few pointers before uh, handing over and giving the floor to uh, Mr. Piersani for his uh, keynote speaker, I would like to highlight his uh, role as Secretary General of uh, Amnesty International, he has also served as a UNESCO Assistant Director General for Social and Human Sciences. Uh, that is actually the sector uh, under which I'm serving today in the UNESCO Regional Office for, for Eastern Africa. Um, uh, Mr. Piersane uh, was also the East, the founder and president of Imagine Africa, uh, which uh, Bruce uh, briefly alluded in his presentation, as well as is a patron of uh, the and a senior advisor at the uh, OICD. Uh, that uh, uh, Bruce is uh, leading. Mr. Piersane is also an active uh, citizen, uh, political leader, influencer in his country, Senegal, where he serves as national, he has served as national secretary of the Socialist Party of Senegal until 2020. Uh, he has resigned and joined new Pan-Africanist party, uh, Pasfest Le Patriot, where he's currently uh, active member as well. So without further ado, and uh, uh, to also keep in mind the time, we are a bit uh, uh, late, uh, I would like to uh, really welcome and hand over to uh, Mr. Pierre Sane for his keynote speak. Thank you. Over to you. You are muted. Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you very much. Well, um, first of all, thank you very much for the uh, invitation and uh, for the opportunity to to reconnect on the opportunity to reconnect with my old friend, Bruce uh, White. Uh, we've been working together since uh, Japan when I joined his university in uh, Kyoto uh, to reconnect with uh, UNESCO and with uh, ex-colleagues from UNESCO with UNESCO issues, UNESCO ideas. Uh, I think in the reconfiguration of the UN system that is inevitable and that is probably forthcoming, if there is an organization that should really be strengthened at this moment, it is UNESCO because of its mission to build peace in the mind of men and women. It's also an opportunity to reconnect with uh, uh, East Africa, with Kenya, where I served as regional director of IDRC in the year 80s and 90s, and to reconnect with this part of Africa, which is East Africa, where I think you have a better crop of leaders than we have in West Africa at the moment. So to address the theme, I framed for myself a question, which is what are education for what social transformation? Uh, we are in uh, the beginning of the implementation of the uh, African Union 2063 uh, agenda. Uh, and that vision really foresees an Africa where Africans we live in much better conditions. We live in peace. We live in freedom. 
will enjoy the cultural diversity of the continent from Algiers to Cape Town and from Dakar to Djibouti, bringing together people from different kinds of backgrounds and identities, be it Arabs, Africans, Chinese immigrants, Somali, Bantu, Wolof, etc. We have the most diverse continent on earth and this is something that we need to use to build cooperation, living together, peace and development. Uh, let me start with a brief remark on identities because I know that uh, many of you will address the issue, so I will not take long. Identities hatch, change continuously with within societies and cultures in themselves in perpetual transformations. At the same time, identities are also rooted in invariances and deeply held values. Transformations do not occur in a vacuum. They occur on territories with specificities linked to history, geography, migrations, hybridation, climate change. Social change, which is different from social transformation. Social change is shaped by technological changes, class relations, modes of production, education, urbanization, competing ideologies, such as human rights or religious beliefs, global economic relations. Social changes seen as changes in human interaction and relationship that transform cultural and social institutions. That transformation has to be managed. And that is where policy intervenes under the guidance of the state in a process that should involve research and democratic debate. It is actually a co-production of the relevant policies through a process that involves research, policy formulation, policy implementation, monitoring, evaluation, adjustment. The purpose being to contain the negative trends and to boost and capacitate the positive trends. Based on that understanding, we reformulated the most program at UNESCO, which is management of social transformation, at the social and human sciences sector in the years 2000-2010. Then we moved to institutionalization. One, we set up a firm of ministers in charge of social development in each region to validate the new orientation of the most program. Now, of course, there were resistance coming mainly from European researchers whose main focus was knowledge production and dissemination to, uh, to their colleagues. The orientation we chose was not just knowledge production, it was policy and concrete transformation. So the, the, the focus of the ministers, no, the, the, the forum of the ministers covered different regions, East Africa, West Africa, Arab region, Asia, Latin America. And in each region, we set up research networks to interact with the policymakers, the professional NGOs. Then we pushed for a foundation and two priorities. The foundation was human rights. And the two priorities agreed by all were poverty eradication and women's rights. 
in the program of poverty eradication, which was a UN global uh, agenda, uh, and which is still the overall UN priority, women's rights is the second. So we engage in a process of redefining poverty from a human rights perspective, from eradication to abolition, from capacity building to violation of human rights. What do you do when you are confronted with a human rights violation on a massive scale? You start by abolition, like the abolition of slavery or the abolition of apartheid not alleviation or reduction, the goal should be abolition. Abolition empowers victims, that is the poor, who can then seek justice to face the perpetrators, those who decide policies that push people and maintain them into poverty. Same with domestic violence. Domestic violence is not a private affair, but it is a human rights violation, which obliges the state to deploy policies to end the epidemic on violence against women. If you lift millions of people out of poverty and women out of fear, you transform societies. Look at China, from a poor rural society to an urban industrial society, which took China last week to the first economic power in the world overtaking the United States, last week, according to the IMF. And this could not have happened without the leadership of the state and the management of the Chinese Communist Party. My second point is about art education, which is not my field of expertise. And that's why I will be happy to listen to the various communications. Here, I ask again a question, who are the most potent agents of change in our <clears throat> African societies. Undeniably, it will be the urban youth, whether they are in education or in schools, informal schools or not. Whose arts do they consume on a daily basis? The music of the rappers and the short films Produce, uh, producers, the, produ the producers of films and series on television on ordinary day or social network. Now, I know rappers are generally identified as bad influence, promoting negative values, but it doesn't have to be. The question is, who is engaging them seriously in conversation. Who is talking to them, those rappers and short film producers, about African history and Pan-Africanism, about patriotism as an antidote to tribalism and external cultural hegemony, and more importantly, who is talking to them about ethics of responsibility. In other words, the, I, the question I raise is the necessary education of those artists. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much for this uh, uh, inspiring point, uh, 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 Mr. Pierre Sane. Uh, I will not pretend to do a kind of uh, uh, resume of it uh, and i'm also very happy that uh, uh, 
uh, it's uh, recorded and will be shared widely, including with uh, those who have not had the opportunity to join us today. Uh, but uh, uh, really appreciation of uh, the history you were able to, to trace back on the process that led to the creation of the most program. Uh, I really knew that you will come in strongly on that. And uh, this is also, again, the opportunity to appreciate the work you have done on that, on the, at that level. And uh, to reassure you, the program is still alive within UNESCO, reinvigorated, and uh, uh, still in need of all the support of uh, different thinkers, uh, you in the uh, prime line for sure. Um, you also highlighted uh, some very important framework for, from the Africa Union uh, 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 agenda and vision 2063 uh, to dive into uh, some critical question related to identity that you really contextualize as something that is not happening uh, out of the vacuum and the construction of the identity and the way it should really be inspiring in the different processes and conversation we, we need to have. Um, you also highlighted the importance of uh, the social change we are going through. And again, re refocusing on how the, the management of social transformation and the most program could be useful in this process. Um, I also uh, really uh, highlighted uh, and uh, echoed the, uh, and would like to echo the, the very vibrant call and invitation you made to all the, the, the participants to this uh, session vis-a-vis -vis how effectively are we engaging not just with the, the main target, that is the youth you have highlighted, uh, being the, the biggest part of the uh, population of Africa, and pinpointing who is their influencers, who is it that is shaping their understanding of the societies they are living in, uh, mentioning uh, creative uh, industries from the rappers to the filmmakers and, and others, and they need to really engage with them. And I fully concur with you on the importance of that conversation so that we take advantage of the platform they have, but feed it with uh, the right narrative. You insisted on the ethics, which needs to be at the heart of the work they are doing so that their message is not just call for violence or uh, empty messages as it happens in so many cases today, but really to shape the uh, African perspective, the Pan-Africanism you call for, the patriotism you highlighted also in their different messages and connected also with uh, the general issue of Africa, which is a, a good foundation for, for all of that. So, so much grateful for your insightful thought that I believe will uh, really uh, uh, instill the conversation we are having today. And uh, with this view, uh, I want to hand over to um, Christina, I guess. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Piersani.